So for today I want to talk about something different. Let's talk about fragrances. Specifically, I've selected four fragrances from my perfume collection that embody um, a, bewi a bewitching quality. They're bewitching. Um, they help you tap into your inner dark goddess. Um, very powerful fragrances that can also um, imbue your energy with power when you need it. And because, um, because I need to say this, um, because this is what I think of fragrance, is that these are all unisex. As far as I'm concerned, I don't care what gender you are, these are bewitching, they're awesome, and I look forward to sharing them with you. So today I was thinking, you know what, instead of doing um, a tarot video, I wanted, you know, it's Friday. I thought, okay, let's do a flashback Friday. And then when I thought flashback, I right away flashback to fragrance and vintage fragrance. And all four of these fragrances I'm going to feature today are still available. Some, you, you know, a couple you're going to have to like hunt for, like, but they're for sure on the internet. You'll, you'll find them. You know, if you live in America, you could get them probably off Amazon for like nothing okay not nothing but you know what I'm saying um, so what kind of fragrances fragrances are these um, for the most actually all four of them are Chypre and Chypre is a classification of fragrance that was extremely popular in the 1970s and in my humble okay in my not so humble opinion the dead sexiest dead sexiest of the classifications and I'm talking about Chypre uh, in its true form from the 1970s where you have the top note of bergamot and you have that oak moss and um, you have that juxtaposition of a bit of a fruit at the top and then that really strong woody and resiny and then animalic kick and animalic is exactly what it sounds like stuff that smells a little the Haskank. In, uh, in fragrance parlance, we say, you know, fragrances that all four of these definitely have skank. Even the ones that are newer formulations, the skank is still there. So let me begin. And I wanted to start with my, probably my, one of my, fit, not, not the only, but I love the movie American Hustle. And one of my favorite, favorite quotes is by Jennifer Lawrence. Her character's name is Rosalind. And she's talking about a nail polish top coat and um, to another woman. And she's, and this is I actually just, you know, printed it off the internet so I would not mess it up. There's this top coat that you can get, that can you, you can only get from Switzerland. And I don't know what I'm going to do because I'm running out, but I love the smell of it. Irving and I can't get enough of it. There's something. The top coat, it's like perfumey, but there's also something rotten. And I know that sounds crazy, but I can't get enough of it. Smell it. It's true. Historically, the best perfumes in the world, they're all laced with something nasty. It is true. Irving loves it. He can't get en enough of that stuff. Sweet and sour, rotten and delicious. And that is my favorite classification of fragrance. So I'm going to start with the first one. The first one is widely available still. You can still get the, this one in uh, drug stores here in Canada. I know the Shoppers Drug Mart, Pharma Pre in Quebec, um, carry it. It's on their web. It was it was on their website up until recently. I'm sure they still have it. And it's Paloma Picasso. And in America, you could get this easily either you know on the perfume on the discount perfume websites. You could probably get this. Um, at Walgreens I don't know but you know what I figured I do this kind of video in November because it's gearing up for Christmas and often a lot of these um, fragrances make a comeback <laughs> um, for Christmas so this one is Paloma Picasso and I have the little black bottle but also the same formulation also comes where the in a larger bottle um, where the center is clear glass so it's a Chypre fragrance for women, and it was launched in 1985. The nose behind this fragrance is Cre Création Aromatique. Top notes are hyacinth, ylang-ylang, bergamot, 
angelica, rose, and lemon. So there you have like that nice uh, civilized lady-like floral top notes. Middle notes are mimosa, mimosa, coriander, jasmine, and rose. Still, you know, pretty ladylike, but the coriander uh, already starts to give it a little skink. And then the base notes are honey, iris, sandalwood, amber, patchouli, musk, and oak moss. This, if when, when I list the notes to you, this sounds like a fragrance that would be pretty... Um, pretty and floral and ladylike it is not this fragrance is is a dark goddess and if you're looking for a chypre um, that taps into that dark goddess energy this is the one it can but you know you need, this is something that you really need to test I wouldn't I would never buy this I would never suggest you buy this without testing it because it could be quite harsh and rank, uh, depending on your body chemistry. So that's Paloma Picasso. The next one is, uh, um, is by uh, Emanuele Ungaro, or Ungaro, and it's Diva. Look at this bottle. It's, the sticker on it is just tacky. It was the, it was the 80s, my friends. What do you want to say? <sighs> So I'll read, so just like I did for Paloma Picasso, I'll read what I got off Fragrantica dot, I think it's Fragrantica, Fragrantica.com or net. It doesn't matter. Do a Google search for Fragrantica. I'll put the link in the box below. Don't worry. Just let's, let's get through this because this fragrance, this is just like this one. Oh yeah. I probably should have mentioned with this one. This one, a little, goes a long way. Do not overspray this. You'll make yourself sick. This one, do not. This one is also extremely strong. And it's it's a fragrance that revolves around rose. So um, if this, this is like your dark goddess in terms of like, this is Kali. This is Kali the Destroyer. Love it. Okay. This is a more of a different kind of thing. Um, this this is um, this is a quite quite a sensual fragrance. So this one you could you know this one could be you could pull this off if you're someone who has um, you could wear this to work is what I'm trying to say. Provided of course that you work in an environment that's not scent free. So if you're some if you're someone who dresses in black and you have a position of authority yeah you know who i'm talking to i'm talking to you all right back to diva Un ungaro's first perfume is dedic or ungaro depending you know depending on your pronunciation where you're from is uh his first perfume dedicated to women. The word diva carries an association with prima donna and has the Italian meaning of goddess. Diva is a classic perfume for women and its composition is built around rose, Ungaro symbol. The bottle imitates curves of the female body, which is again one of the Ungaro's idols. Now, in the 80s, the magazine articles, like the magazine ad copy, had uh, an uh, Ungaro is a fashion designer and he um, there was a dress so Diva was um, the whole ad copy was this white dress that had this kind of pattern to it the opening is classic floral with a citrusy note so see very much like our lady friend our, our um, lady friend <laughs> Very much like P Paloma Picasso, which harmonizes with tuberose. Elang Elang is mix and and it's mixed with rose. So tuberose already throws in that sexiness. Tuberose is um, very um, a very fleshy scented flower. It could smell. It kind of smells like gardenia and bubble gum and warm skin, all at the same time. 
where was it? The sweet and sensual finale is reached by the notes of vanilla, sandalwood, and iris. Again, these notes sound very mild. They sound very um, approachable. This one is absolutely suffocating, so be careful. I'm saying one spritz smeared everywhere. You know what I mean? It's like just be careful. Do not wear this to work. Do not spritz in this area because it'll make you sick to your stomach. Also, for those of you who are into perfume and um, may not know, this was uh, created by Jacques Polge in 1983. And this was the, I guess he was practicing, so he went and he, Jacques Polge went to create this fragrance for Ungaro, and he was practicing because this is kind of a deconstructed, um, I think the best way I could, it's a deconstructed cocoa by Chanel. So I'm talking about Coco, the original, not Coco Mademoiselle that, that, that's old, you know, that's current, that's the modern one. I'm talking about vintage Coco, the one with the black label on the bottle, not Coco Noir, which is nothing Noir about it. I'm talking about the one from 1985. So this is a deconstructed Coco. It's, um, Coco is smooth, sophisticated, warm and inviting. This, this is bristly. This is the same fragrance, but it can be a little off-putting, like me. Anyway, so that was Diva by Ungaro. This one, you can, this one I've seen it on eBay, I've seen it on, on Amazon, I've seen it on the perfume sites. Um, this one is no longer in production, um, but you could potentially score this on the internet. So what you would, you would have effectively be getting like a, a vintage bottle. Um, I don't know when they stopped production on this. Um, but like I said, this is like no longer in production, but still you could find it on the internet. All right. The next one. So Diva, Italian word for goddess. The next one is like, it hits you over the head with its... Uh, with its name and I freaking love this. Now I used to have the vintage and used it up and there is, and this is a current formulation that is still available by Lancôme and this is the Maginoir. And Maginoir is of all the ones, even, even beyond Paloma Picasso, this is the skankiest. There is something in this, even though it's an, it's um modern formulation and, um, there are regulations now in place that there's things that they can't that perfumers cannot use anymore um, because they either are highly allergic, uh, you know, high, high known to cause allergies, so highly allergenic, or they're uh, animal derived, such as a uh, deer musk. Uh, oak moss is known to be like extremely uh, allergenic to people and. Um, so oak moss is one of those uh, ingredients that um, I guess they're trying to figure out, you know, some, some perfumers have figured out how to do like a really good um, synthetic uh, version of it to work in their fragrances. Others, other f vintage fragrances did not survive reformulation at all. Anyway. But I'm not here to discuss that. I'm here to discuss bewitching fragrances. And Maginoir, if you can get the vintage of Maginoir, it's even skankier. This stuff is downright dirty. Um, Maginoir, well, means black magic in French, um, is a classic fragrance from the house of Lancôme. Maginoir has a unique composition which, which doesn't follow the classical top note, middle note, and bass note development. It resembles a figure eight. It opens and fully reveals its character while the direction of its development suddenly changes and it starts to move in the opposite direction, ending where it started. It is one of the most bewitching oriental fragrances. This, I agree with. The exotic bouquet starts with Bulgarian rose and black currant buds. At its heart, the jasmine flame burns, blended with ylang ylang, amber and incense, among other notes. See, they don't even divulge the other notes. Um, Maginois was launched in 1978, and the nose behind this fragrance is Gérard Goupy. This, this is worth a sniff. This, um, head to your local 
department store, go to the Lancome counter, ask them if they have a, a tester for Magin Rouge. You may have to, you may have to ask them for it. It's probably behind the counter, hidden somewhere because, you know, old lady perfume, which I totally take issue with the old lady perfume um, description because, frankly, you know what? In a few years, old ladies are going to smell like donuts because that's that's the fragrance they wore when they were young, right? So this, to me, is a whole other topic. I better just steer clear of it. Let's get back to Maginoire. This, again, just like the other ones, very, very unisex. This one um, is extremely powerful. Again, this one is potent considering that it is a modern formulation it is extremely potent a little bit long goes a long way test before you buy and for any fragrance you spray it on your skin and you walk away at least half an hour they say 20 minutes like you know but no no at least half an hour an hour if it's haunting you hours later then it's for you but you need to you need to give it time to develop on your skin with your body chemistry and body chemistry changes with hormones age you know what i mean that's why something that maybe you wore in your 20s you're not really enjoying anymore uh, because it's not just your body chemistry that changes and this is something that no one ever mentions when they're talking about fragrance is that it's not just your body chemistry that changes as you get older well your sense of smell changes your tastes change um you know what i mean so it's it's a little bit beyond just the body chemistry changing so maginoire by lancome beautiful and this one i don't well, i mentioned like you know I, I read what fragrantica says so this one also is a sheep and it starts out it starts out you think it's going to be like a nice ladylike perfume and then it just really does a 180 <laughs> just like the description does a figure eight whatever but it does this 180 into this very animalic it's like you know it smells of wood and it smells animalic um like that skank smell and it's dead sexy and um try it oh right i should have mentioned this before so I purchased all these fragrances with my own money. I am not sponsored. No one has sent me anything to review. I am not, the, the, this video is not sponsored. I'm just perfume obsessed. All right, there's my dis disclaimer. I should have like mentioned that at the start. Last but not least, to me, I love them all. Of course I do, right? Because I don't have anything. My 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 collection is um, very carefully curated, and I don't I don't have anything in my collection that I don't love and wear and um, can gush about, right? But this one, this one's iconic. This is American. So French, French, because the nose was French, Jacques Paul. I'm pretty sure, attendez, uh, that French, Paloma Picasso, American. This is Halston. And this is, this is the scent of Studio 54. I was born 10, at least, at least 10 years, uh, 10 years too late to have experienced Studio 54 or that whole era of 70s. I was a child in the 70s. But let me tell you, in a parallel universe, I was there because I freaking love Halston. Halston smells like Donna Summer sounds. Okay? When I spray Halston on or I spray it in the air, I hear Donna Summer singing, I feel love. It's like that, op that whole opening intro when I spray this. This, I'll read you what, it's, what I got off of Grantica and then I'll describe to you what it smells like to me. 
Halston Classic by Halston is a Chypre floral. So again with the Chypre, right? All four of them are Chypre. A Chypre floral fragrance for women. Halston Classic was launched in 1975. The nose behind this fragrance is Bernard Chant. So, yeah. Top notes are mint, melon, green leaves, peach, and bergamot. Now, I'm a person who um, loves peach scented fr fragrances that have peach as a note, but peach just on my body chemistry is just absolutely foul. Thankfully, there's not much in this one. Um, where was I? Middle notes are carnation, orris root, jasmine, marigold. Marigold. Okay, I'm going to go back. I'll, re I'll read the... I'll, Elang Elang, Cedar, and Rose. Base notes are sandalwood, amber, patchouli, musk, oak moss, vetiver, and incense. This is quite the cocktail, my friends. Now, if I were to describe it, what does it smell like? Seriously, it smells like oak moss. Um, of course, it's like on, this, on my skin, it develops, and I, get, and I get all these other facets. But straight up. Uh, even and this is for those of you in the know this is a modern formulation or what I mean is like this is like the one that I, I got this only a few years ago it was um, it came in a it came in a little set with with, with the body cream um, if you look up you know if you look up Halston on the internet you look up videos on YouTube people will say that this is rank compared to the original that you have to get the original no 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 my friends current Halston or whatever Halston you can get is better than no Halston at all and don't go drop hundreds of dollars on vintage perfume because if you don't know what you're doing like you know especially you're buying it on the internet first of all don't spend hundreds of dollars on vintage perfume it's ridiculous right anyway but I'm just saying this because I care about you because if because I'm the perfumes I'm sharing with you today, the fragrances I'm sharing with you today are still available in a current formulation that is decent, and this is one of them. All right, this one this smells like I said, like disco music. It smells like Donna Summer. I smell, I feel love. That whole that whole intro and then the whole song. Um, it's a little it's it's a little fruity from you know from the melon the, it's a little bit the melon's a little bit rotten remember that quote that you know i read to you at the beginning from american hustle right today it smells a little bit like garbage uh it smells a little bit like there's a little bit of that rotten melon um marigold if any of you have marigolds um planted outside your homes well you know marigold is uh, it's a little, it's a little stinky uh, it's a, it's not exactly a flower known for. Um, it, it it doesn't have an, an aroma like rose or gardein. Well, gardenia is not a good example, but like rose or tuberose. Uh, marigold is uh, it's a little rank. Um, jasmine can be a little indolic, right? Also, jasmine can smell a little animalic and. Um, Lang Lang can go there too, right? So this this is definitely a. F this smells like sweaty bodies, dancing to very loud disco music. I'm pretty sure if you live in North America, Canada, United States, Christmas is coming up. Check your local drugstores for this guy. Usually it shows up in a little box set with. Um, either with some other fragrances, um, really inexpensive, and you know sometimes it shows up with the body lotion. Last time it showed up, um, mine is half, almost halfway done. Last time it showed up, um, Natalia, if you're watching, I did buy backups of this because they were $10 for the kit. They were just blowing them out, so I got a couple of backups but I'll be using this up I do have backups of fragrances that I really love but only the ones I actually wear regularly because you know 
I'm not going to have a backup. Um, something that's strong like this. I don't have backup of this. This, this, look how small this bottle is. And there's still enough of it. I'm not going to run out of this in my lifetime. This one, I'm never going to run out of this. But this, as you could see, I have backup. Of it. All right. So that's it for me. Um, I wanted to share four fragrances that I find are absolutely bewitching. Um, they help you tap into that inner witch. Um, this is like an inner dark goddess kind of thing, right? But these other ones are more like your inner, your inner witch. Um, this one has a very Freya kind of vibe to it. Not Venus, Freya. Um, this one, this one kind of straddles that whole empress, um, nurturing. It's almost, it's almost almost motherly almost but there's there's something in it that it's like a little bit more than that right it's, it's a bit sexier than that right this is not this is not nona's fragrance unless nona's dead sexy and that's her that's her personality so that's it for me today in terms of this video i might record another one i don't know it depends on whether i'm prepared and whether the light uh cooperates and why don't you um i'd like to invite you to uh leave comments below if you have a fragrance that makes you feel witchy that helps you tap into your inner dark goddess that helps you tap in, uh, uh, tap into your inner uh powerful earthy witch energy please by all means share down below i'd love to um find out what it is I'd love to hear what it is or read what it is. You know what I'm saying, right? Anyway, um, that's it for me. And I bid you all a beautiful day. Bye-bye.